I was in jail 11 years ago today. I was now in county jail, was looking at three to five years in prison. That's what the charges were gonna bring me. And I was scared. And I didn't know God. Everything came to a screeching halt. And then my ex-wife uh, perjured herself in her affidavit to my attorney. And they reduced my charges. One month before I went to trial, I got probation and I got house arrest. So I went to house arrest for six months and I was on probation for two years. So I never saw any, I never saw any prison time. So somebody who could have gone to prison for as much as five years, but I lost my job. I had a home down in the city that I was remodeling, big 3,000 square foot house I was remodeling, you know, antiques, tools. I lost all that. My ex-wife picked up all our belongings. She took my $2,000 of my last paycheck, you know, and went to California. I've never seen her since. I had nothing. I don't even have the diplomas to prove that I had all that education. They were thrown away. I had clothes. That's what I had. And I started over, eight dollars an hour, working as a baker, because I knew how to bake. And I tried several times to get a job as a social worker. No one would even look at me because of what I did. It's a violent crime. And I was at the co-op for 10 years. When I was there a couple years, I met a girl who was coming into there, a customer. And we started talking, and we started dating, and that's Rachel. And we were still partying, you know, and we weren't, she was, you know, doing, she was a Reiki master, and we went to New Age festivals together, way into tarot readings, and because of the tarot, I'd studied the Kabbalah because there's this connection to the two. Kabbalah, the Kabbalah is Jewish mysticism. And I, I think I was slow to come back around. I was still reading channel material. It's all this enlightened stuff. I mean, you read it and you really, when, you, when your eyes are got blindfolds on, you really suck this in and you really believe this stuff because your, your, your spirit is darkened. And it's all you have, energy healings and stuff like that. It's very real. You know, I can't, you know, I can't say enough of that, about how deceptive it is because it's real. We had this new CD set that we were going to listen to. And we started listening to it. We were remodeling a, a trailer that we found for free on Craigslist. And neither one of us could reconcile in terms of agreement with what we were hearing. And so I started doing some research, and it's called New Thought Theology. It's what the Unity Churches follow after. And I was like, but what about people who are hurting? What about people who are in need? And so I started reading the Bible, and I bought the book of Psalms. It was bringing me great comfort. I found a New Testament and was reading that. I started praying for Rachel. God, if you're real, if, you're, if I'm not messing, you know, missing the page, if you really are real, if you really are, have come back in my life in some kind of way, if you really, you know, then you'll come for Rachel because she was not receptive. A friend of mine that I had gone to school with at Fort Wayne Bible College, he had an affair. And I heard about it through the grapevine. And he was pastor. He had come to see me when I was in jail. One of the few people that had come to see me. I called him up, uh, tried to encourage him. And I got off the phone with him, and I was thinking about the state of the world. And I just, something clicked in me, man. <laughs> I just knew that I was headed to hell. Just knew it. I could just see it clearly. I was watching this guy that I'd known that I had met when I first came to Fort Wayne, and I was just getting out of partying, and here he was, he'd had an affair. He was a pastor of the church. I just knew I needed to change. Interestingly enough, my mom, just last night when I was talking to my mom, she reminded me of this verse from when I was in jail. Job 14, verse 7. For there is hope for a tree if he be cut down, that it will sprout again, and that its shoots will not cease, though its root grow old in the earth, 
and its stump die in the soil. Yet at the scent of water, it will bud and put out branches like a young plant. Now, of course, this is Job <laughs> bemoaning the context. Job is bemoaning his life. His friends have already come to visit him, and so it's kind of a rotten time for him. But that little verse in context for me was phenomenal at the time. I went to hear my son. My son was going to be a missionary. My son, my middle son, Nate, he went to China, and he spoke in this church. And I went and saw him. I got smoked up before I went to church because I was nervous. Hair down my back, looking like a hippie, right? Got all smoked up. I probably stunk to high heaven, right? And went to church. And the Holy Spirit was, just laid me out. I just cried the whole service. Stoned, crying. What a mess. <laughs> and when I, and Rachel explains it, you know, she came to Christ in July. We got rid of everything. We got rid of, you know, all our magical books. We had a huge library. Got rid of our tarot cards. Got rid of weed. We had weed. We sold back to the guy we were buying weed from. Started living a different life. I've gone through all this life, man. I've been in Indiana since 1984 to come back full circle to just now feeling like in 2017, can you believe that? 33 years. How many years did I waste? I've been married three times. Really? I came from a divorced family. I did not want to get married but once. You know, I could be head of a region if I had stayed and not messed up my life. Who knows? But God did not have those plans for me. You know, I'm a maintenance guy for a realty firm. I clean buildings. I work on things. I paint things. I do yard work, landscaping. I'm completely anonymous. I'm the guy who you see working inside or outside of a building you completely ignore. I'm nothing in that way. And I've never been happier. It took all those years of me rebelling against God the Father, running, and Him allowing me to destroy my own life for me to see what I had done. I was really good at doing stuff. I'm really good at being busy and accomplishing things and running things and being an administrator or organizing. And you can do all that in your own strength and call it God. You can be involved in the church. So you can do lots of stuff, be really busy for God and not really be following God in your heart. He's not Lord of your life. That's a more, even more recent revelation for me. I'll say in the past three years. You know, Rachel and I had another child that died, Soren, and after, and he, he died when he was born. And that was a big eye opener to us as to where we were going in our path. You know, get serious about him being Lord of our life. It's a long process. It's Luke 14, and I'll just read verse 33 for you. So therefore, any one of you who does not renounce all that he has cannot be my disciple. I don't know what all is for anybody else. I know what it is for me, being successful in my own right, using my own worldly wisdom, using uh, my own intelligence, my own craftiness to get what I want in life, being willing to be humble and to do, you know, to be a glorified janitor, have a complete service heart and, and not to make a move unless God wants me to. I'll never have the successes I had as a younger person. All I have is those consequences and being willing to go forward anyway. I think God, let me hang myself. I think he, he always protected me, right? Because I always had a roof over my head and I always had a job. So he let me have that integral part of me that he put in me to begin with, I might add. And for a long time, he pursued me. I, I always feel like there was somebody reminding me of his love for me. I was never too far away from bumping up against a Christian. He was going to remind me, but he was going to let me live my own life because I was going to be headstrong. So he was like, fine. The classic prodigal son thing. I want my money now, pops. Okay, you can have your money now. You can have your inheritance now. And then I'm going to go out and I'm going to blow it on wine, women, and song and completely end up in the, in the gutter. And then you're going to let me come home and you're still going to welcome me. Really? It's mind-blowing. It's 
absolutely mind-blowing. That's why I wanted to that's why I wanted to give my testimony because there's people like me I know that are going to listen to this who are headstrong and they're not there to bottom yet and the danger is what if you die when you reach bottom God allowed me to live what if you die you don't know that's the danger in giving a testimony like this is because God was gracious to me. God's had mercy on me. Stop what you're doing. Reevaluate. I wanted to give this testimony because God is in the business of raising the dead. And if you're spiritually dead and you're living in your own way and you're going your own way and You've been preserved so far. It's only the grace of God that's preserved you so far. It isn't nothing else. It isn't your cleverness. It isn't your craftiness. It isn't your good luck. It isn't your friends helping you out, or your wife or your girlfriend helping you out. It's God the Father. And that day will come to an end, and you will reach your rock bottom. And what will you do then? So don't let yourself get there. If you're listening to me today, and it resonates with you, you better stop. You better change.